My name is uh, Chang Hui Yang. I'm a professor at the California Institute of Technology in the uh, electrical engineering, bioengineering, and uh, medical engineering uh, department. Uh, so one of the uh, research projects that uh, my group has recently uh, been in progress on is uh, what we call the Fourier Titographic Microscopy uh, Project. This project was actually started by one of my graduate students, uh, Guan Zhang, who has since uh, actually became a professor over at the uh, University of Connecticut. Um, so what that project is about is that uh, we have developed this uh, computational approach to actually address uh, microscopy in a way that I think is very useful for digital micro uh, pathology applications. So your standard microscope system, you typically are limited uh, by physical limitations of your optical elements in such a way that you either get a high resolution, small field of view uh, image of whatever object you're looking at, or a high uh, large field of view, uh, poor resolution uh, image of whatever object you're looking at. So um, those are the compromise uh, that you have to live with. Uh, what we have done is that we've created a system that basically allows us to computationally push standard microscope in such a way that they exceed the physical limitations of uh, physical optics. Um, and uh, this, at the end of the day, allows us to actually get both a large field of view, high resolution, as well as a very large uh, depth of field associated with this uh, microscopy uh, approach that we have developed. What we do is we come in with light uh, at different uh, angular illumination uh, and take a bunch of low resolution snapshots uh, and then computationally uh, actually extract both the phase and the amplitude variations of the light field coming from the object. With this uh, more complete set of uh, data, we can then render a high resolution wide field of view image. In addition, because we actually have that face information, we can actually uh, focus, refocus our image uh, to our heart's content over a very large uh, depth of field of about 300 microns uh, with a resolution as comparable to a 20x microscope system uh, very flexibly uh, after the data has been taken. Meaning that uh, after we have uh, collected the data, we can do post-processing to refocus the samples to our heart's content until we get a sharp uh, uh, focus image. It's a technique that actually uh, doesn't uh, require much sophistication in terms of the optical uh, microscope itself. Uh, it actually lends itself very well to, uh, for making very cost-effective uh, autonomous digital pathology machines. Uh, and this actually uh, is potentially useful in a context that this may actually allow, because the cost associated with it, it would be uh, much lower than what uh, you can find in digital pathology uh, right now, uh, it may actually may allow such systems uh, to get into more places that you would otherwise not be able to find digital pathology machines. Uh, perhaps it would even be able to get to the point where uh, a general practitioner uh, might be able to own a digital pathology machine uh, in his office. And that, I think, is actually a, a significant thing because uh, in that case, he, can actually, uh, he or she can actually uh, you know, prep a sample, stick it into one of the system, the system automatically takes an image of the microscope slide and uh, electronically sends that data off to a, digital, to a pathologist uh, for examination and diagnosis. In this way, you can actually significantly cut down on the time uh, between uh, sample collection and diagnosis. But there is one thing that uh, we're also working on that uh, a sort of more basic science experiment right now. Uh, why is it that we're not transparent? It actually isn't it because uh, light is being strongly absorbed by our tissue. It's actually because light is strongly scattered by our tissue. So if we can somehow turn off scattering in, in human tissue, right, we will actually all look uh, fairly transparent. Okay? <laughs> so, so this is actually uh, a, a, a challenge that actually has a, a been existing in uh, biophotonics for a long time. How do we get light usefully through tissue in such a way that uh, we can extract useful information? And it, and light is actually a very uh, very useful in that context because if you look at X-ray, you look at ultrasound, you look at MRI to, to a certain extent, they are not techniques that are useful for getting a biochemical information. Light is about the only one that uh, we can use easily to get biochemical information. But we're typically restricted to very superficial layer of the tissues. So, um, so the project that's going on in my group uh, regarding time reversal optical focusing is uh, aimed at addressing that by using the nature of the fact that uh, light, when it's scattered by tissue, as with 
most other scattering uh, uh, object like fogs, uh, that light, the scattering pattern is actually deterministic in nature. So if you can somehow record the wavefront of the light as, is, as on the exit side uh, passing through the tissue, you actually have enough information to cause the light to retrace their path back through the tissue. And uh, what uh, uh, Li Hong Wang over at uh, Was uh, Washington University of uh, St. Louis uh, and my group has shown is the fact that uh, you can actually use uh, ultrasound tagging in combination with this time reversibility of light to focus light fairly deeply in tissue. So, uh, so far we have achieved the ability to actually focus down to the, uh, a few tens of microns uh, within a tissue that's a few millimeter thick. Uh, and that is significant because uh, you know, going forward, if we can actually push this technology forward, forward further so that we can make it fast enough to actually uh, address uh, living tissue and we'll actually push the sensitivity of the technique further, we will be able to actually take that uh, optical light focus and put it deep within tissue to interrogate locally for this biochemical signature. Uh, it will be useful for early detection of cancer in ways that X-ray, ultrasound, and MRI so far hasn't been able to do well because they don't get much uh, biochemical information. With light, with this uh, deep focusing approach, we potentially will be able to do that. Another thing that uh, is also another good application of this kind of approach is the fact that once you're able to focus light deeply within tissue, you can use that light spot to actually uh, do ablation and to do cutting. So imagine being able to do surgery where you don't have to open up the skin anymore uh, in order to be able to actually uh, do surgical procedure. That will lead to situations where you can actually have faster healing uh, post-operation. You can also have a significantly, significant reduction of infection during uh, surgical procedures. So those two applications are, I think, are a very good application, and it's worth actually us spending the time and effort to actually investigate thoroughly uh, to try to address. 